Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we build a quick and easy DIY support frame for our 200 watt solar blanket. This simple DIY solution clicks together, is lightweight, compact, packs away like this so you can put it pretty much anywhere and is ready for your next trip away. So come along as we show you how. So this is my trusty DriveTech 4x4 200 watt solar blanket. Now I had to get this 12 months ago when we are at Hat Head and we're just about to head there again. So I want to get this little DIY project underway to make our life a little bit easier because up until this point I've generally just been propping it up on a step ladder, maybe with a few body boards, something like that just to keep it sort of reasonably flat and even and not lying flat on the ground. Because obviously these panels are more efficient if they're up on an angle and, and facing the angle of the sun so they're getting the most solar generation they possibly can. So I've been hunting around for a real neat easy DIY solution and to be honest there's not really a lot around. Even if you go down the route of adapting things, I hunted around Bunnings everywhere, I've done so much Google searching, there really isn't too much you can do to modify or manipulate something that already exists to provide a fairly good solution for this. But as you saw at the start, I've come up with a bit of a solution that is quick and easy, nice and simple, fairly modular, and we'll make this a breeze when we're out camping over the next week up at Hat Head. So let me set up this panel, I'll lay out the bits and pieces and then we'll start assembling the kit. So here's the panel all laid out. In our case it measures roughly 1100 by 1100, so it's about 1.1 meters square. Now I want to have it sitting fairly rigid and flat and true up on a 30 to 35 degree angle. Now the easiest way I could see to do that is to actually get a whole pile of aluminium rod like this or tube that clip together to make a bit of a frame that this sits on. And then you can actually fix the panel onto the frame if you wanted to with some zip ties or some velcro strips. So in my case I ended up sourcing some 25mm pipe. Now be careful here because I originally got this 25mm pipe from Bunnings and they come in one metre lengths and I'm like wow that'll work really well. The big problem here is that it's only got a one millimetre wall. The second lot of pipe I got has a 1.6 metre wall and that's fairly important because what I'm planning to use are these Superpeg nylon C-clip tube inserts. So the idea is that these compression fix into the end of the tube and then they can all clip together. Pretty much like what you would do with a spreader bar and that's exactly what these are made for. So these are the larger ones that are made for 25mm tube. But the big problem with the Bunnings tube as you can see here is that the wall isn't thick enough to get that compression fitting into the pipe and you can't really get them to fit in. Now you can get around this by wrapping some electrical tape around but I think it's better to actually source the correct tube in the first place so that this all clicks together. So these ones I actually sourced from Adam over at Caravan Mods and then from a fencing wholesaler on eBay and I'll put a link down in the description for all the supplies that I've used. I've got these uh, 25mm pipe end caps and these go into the end of the tube on the other end of the connector just to stop all dirt and everything getting up inside and to make it look all nice and tidy. So I've ordered 10 of these and 6 of the super pegs but again in the description I'll put a full list of all the components I've used for this particular project so you can do your own little shopping list including links, Bunnings IN numbers if I get any products from Bunnings and you can assemble your own kit using the instructions I'm providing here. So this 25mm 1.6 wall tube I got from my local metal supplier across the road and it came in a 6.5 metre length. I actually got two lengths cut at 2200 which meant I could fit them in the back of the van and then I had a little bit left over. Now that 6.5 metre length only cost me $35 and I actually think that was probably cheaper than buying the four 1 metre lengths from Bunnings. So definitely go to your metal reseller or wholesaler, find the correct tube, even if you want get them to cut it down, it was actually 21 cents to get the cuts made. So I probably should have just got it all chopped while I was there but I figured I'd do it as part of this episode to show you how to go about it and how to assemble this kit that I'm making up here. So if you want to follow along from home you can do so. 
So let's get these laid out and I'll show you what the general plan is. So I'm trying to keep this as modular and as simple and neat and tidy as possible. So I've ended up, given that we've got the external dimensions here of 1.1 by 1.1, I've gone and made four equal lengths of 1100 mil tube. Now three of those will be the vertical supports that actually support this panel when it's sitting up and facing the sun. The fourth one will be the crossbar that runs along the top and it won't have any C-clamp fixings in it. But if you wanted to keep it fully modular, so all these four were the same, you could actually put a C-clamp into one end and that way these four are all exactly the same. So when you go to set it up and pull it down every time, you don't have to worry about configuring it at all. It all just basically, you can use each piece as its own similar component. But in my case, I'm just gonna put ends on the crossbar that goes along the top and then the vertical uprights will each have a C-clip in the top and just a stopper in the bottom. So we'll have three pieces exactly the same, the crossbar and then the last two components are these two 600 lengths of pipe and again they'll have a C-clamp in the top and a stopper in the bottom and these are actually the supports to hold the whole frame up and they'll just either C-clip onto the crossbar along the top or you could even C-clip them onto these supports that run up to the crossbar at the top so that you can change the angle of the panels. Now how this 600mm came about, if I just put this one down, is that our panels are again roughly 1100 high. Now the ideal positioning in the middle of summer is to have your panels at an angle that is similar to the latitude where you are at that particular time. Now given everyone's moving around it, it makes it a little bit difficult but in Australia it does vary quite a lot actually but in the areas where generally camping I think uh, even towards Brisbane is around about 28 degrees and then down towards Melbourne is around 38 degrees. So you've actually got a 10 degree variance between, you know, sort of heading towards the top of Australia and the bottom. We're pretty much smack bang in the middle at a latitude of around about 32.78 degrees or something like that. So, so for us, anywhere between 30 and 35 degrees will work. So if I had the panels up and this pole coming straight down with the panel sitting like this, 1100 running straight down here, then this straight down would be around about 550 mil from my initial calculation. Now I've made it slightly longer, so it's 600, because the other factor is obviously winter. So the general consensus is that you add around about 15 degrees to tilt the panels a little bit more vertical in the winter months, because obviously the sun is down at that lower solstice sort of angle. So I've just made them 600 and obviously you can have it directly down on an angle and move it around to get whatever angle you want. And to be honest, when you're camping, you're not gonna be super accurate anyway, but we wanna have it fairly close to the correct angle. And having the 600 mil, we'll probably have it very slightly higher, but I think that should be fine anyway. So that is essentially it. The fact that these all just clip together and pull apart, means, as you also saw at the start, you can bundle them all together, wrap them all up. It's a really nice, light and easy, portable frame that packs down, super compact. You can pop it in your caravan, your camp trailer, in your boot, in the tray of your ute, anywhere really, and carry it around with all your solar charging gear. So let's get into it, and I'll show you how I went about actually cutting these tubes down for anyone that's interested, and then a bit of methodology for getting these compression fixings into the poles. Because anyone that's done this or even done the fly mod on the camper trailers knows there's a bit of a trick trying to force the compression fittings in to these tubes, but you want a nice tight fit so they're not going to pull back out. So let's get into it. But hang on just a second, I've been out experimenting with this just to make sure it's all going to work and I've got a few little updates to help you out along the way. The primary one is I've shortened everything by 100 mil all the way around because while well, it sort of made sense to keep it nice and tidy and make everything the same length as the solar blanket itself, it does have a tendency to squash up and move around a little bit. So if you've got a little bit of curtilage or overhang all the way around, it'll work a lot better. So all our 1100 lengths I've shortened down to a meter. It keeps it all nice and tidy and works really well to be honest. 
The other little thing I'm dealing with is how we actually secure the panels down onto the frame. It's not really important if it's nice and still, but it is really windy outside. So I've been trying to come up with a few solutions there and you'll see that later on in the video. So anyway, that's the good thing about these videos. I like to show the good and the bad and any little adjustments we make along the way to make your life a lot easier. So anyway, let's get back into it. Now with most of these lengths, I'm simply cutting them in half, given that I got them pre-cut to 2200 over at the steel shop. This one here is our 1200 length that I've actually already cut and I'm going to cut it down to two lengths of 600. So all I simply do is measure from this end to the middle and put a few witness marks along that 600 millimeter measurement. And then what I'm doing just to make it a lot easier when I'm cutting, because sometimes you can't see these little marks on the tube, is that I wrap some painters tape around and that allows me to easily follow this line nice and neatly to get a nice true cut that isn't all wonky or crooked around the tube. Given this is aluminium tube, it's pretty easy to cut. So you can use either a standard hacksaw, but I'm gonna use a small Ryobi grinder here with a metal cutoff blade that's nice and thin. And noting that, make sure you have your eye protection and your hearing protection to make sure you're nice and safe. And now that it's cut, it's just a simple case of removing the tape and then just finishing it off with a file and some sandpaper to make sure there's no burrs and that it's all nice and flat and true, ready to accept your new ends. And then if you wanna dress all the tubes up and get rid of any marks, you can go over them with some Scotch-Brite, just like so. And then they'll look brand new. So I'll do that and then we'll get into pressing in the fittings and then we're pretty much done. Okay, so everything is all cut and ready to go and you're now trying to work out how to put these nylon fittings into the ends of the pipe. And a lot of people do struggle with this, but I've got a little trick up my sleeve, which I wanna show you right now, that makes it pretty easy. The first step is to get a socket that is around about the same size as a C-clip and just clip it into place. And that means you can actually hammer on this without damaging the nylon C-clip and actually use some force to get this down into the pipe, which you do need to do. Now the second thing that will help you out is to get some lubricant, so some silicon spray, probably even some WD-40, and you just wanna spray this into the tube, just to help it slide down and make its way down into the tube. Because once you see it, it'll start stripping little bits of that nylon plastic off as it makes its way and jams itself into the end of this pipe. And then instead of using a hammer, you wanna get a rubber mallet or a low impact mallet or hammer that you can use to tap this down. So don't use a steel hammer. You wanna use something that's got a little bit of give in it. I've actually got a really good soft mallet that's in my kit in the caravan, but I forgot to bring it in, so I'm just gonna use this for now. But it's actually got more of a plasticky sort of head on it. And I actually use that to tap the bearing seals back onto the hub of the caravan. So it's definitely something that you should have in your kit if you haven't already. But a rubber mallet will suffice if you've got something like that lying around. Otherwise, duck down to Bunnings. And again, I'll put a link down below of what you can use to tap these in. So let's get into it and see how it goes. So we've got our pipe here, just sit it down onto the ground. It's just a case of getting your silicon spray. Spraying a little bit in, you don't need much at all. Place this on top, and then you sort of just need to hold it in place and give it a few good whacks just to get it started, and then you can just tap it down. It's pretty easy. So you can see here, it's actually started making its way into the pipe, and little bits of plastic are sort of coming off. Now we just tap that all the way down, and it's pretty much done. The last little bit is the hardest because there's a ring that runs around here that you then need to force in for a final seal. Like that. And then we just pop the socket out and it's done. Now we'll just get our 25 mil end cap. Push it in with your thumb. You don't need that much pressure really and that's the first one done. So I'll get the rest of them done and then show you how it all clips together.
And now that you're finished, you want to give it all a bit of a wipe down. It probably makes sense to actually, if you're going to scotch bright all this, to do it as the last step. That way you get all the fingerprints and everything off because I find that the silicon fluid or the fluid that you're using to push this in does tend to mark the aluminium a little bit. But that's going to happen while you're using it as well. It's going to oxidise and that's just the nature of raw aluminium because remember this isn't anodised or anything like that. Uh, so give it all a wipe down then I'll show you how this frame goes together. It's pretty cool. So the idea is you get each of your uprights and they simply clip into this top rail and then get your little short uprights and they can just clip into the back and then if you stand it up whew, it only just fits on this workbench it looks something like this so that looks pretty cool and it was very easy to put up, keeps it all nice and simple and it isn't too fussy. I looked at options with hinges and all sorts of things that people had done but I think just a clip together pull apart solution is the best way to do it and that takes us on to the last little step which is actually bundling it all together when it's all packed down. So my solution to this will be to use some of this one wrap velcro which is a continuous loop that has the fluffy on one side and the sticky on the other and you simply just cut it to the required length loop it around itself and it all sticks together so these days you don't need to have two different sections which is the fluffy and the stick you just have the full length and you can adjust it and wrap it around to whatever you need so I'll cut a few lengths of this and we'll use that to bundle it up but before we get onto that the last little step is how you secure these panels onto the frame itself. Now I'm lucky enough to have these loops that wrap around the perimeter of the panel but for me they are actually a little bit too small to run any substantial structure through them but I am going to use these to tie down the panels onto the frame with these and that is these velcro tie down straps so these are the same material as the one wrap where you've got the the sticky on one side and the fluffy on the other and you can simply loop them through themselves and use these as tie downs. Now I'm using these as an alternate to say zip ties. You could also use zip ties but then you've got to cut them and dispose of them and it's becoming a real issue where everyone's using zip ties, they're just cutting them off on site and leaving them on the ground. If you use zip ties, please pick them up, put them in a bin and take them away with you. But how about we pack all this down, I'll show you how compact and easy it is to loop the velcro around and tie this all up then we'll set it up outside and I'll show you how these fasten the panels onto the frame and keep it all nicey nice And there you go it's all set up it's fairly stable it's not too bad at all I did find shortening everything down by 100 mil made a really big difference the one thing I do want to finesse or resolve a little bit more if I come over the other side is how these loops work on the top of my particular panel ideally I want it sitting up more like this so that the crossbar along the top is is keeping it a little bit more rigid and supporting it but it, it does have a tendency to want to just move itself down and you can obviously hear at the moment it's quite windy so that's one thing I just want to finesse a little bit more it works fine there's no issue with that it's very stable you can adjust it up and down do all those things you need to do with a solar panel and even given that it's windy here today you could tie this down as well so I think this is a really good lightweight solution which is going to tick the box when we go camping next week because we will need that supplementary 12 volt solar to plug into the back of the journey 
So anyway, that's this project done. I'll do an update when we get back from our trip and let you know of any little modifications I've done. But I'm pretty happy with this. Again, I just want to adjust that top bit, but we'll see how we go. I'll probably come up with a solution. It always happens when you're driving along or just thinking about something else, you go, ah, that'll work. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick little DIY project. I want to do a few more of these. I've got another one coming up with a uh, camp shower, which I think will be pretty cool. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Like this video if you enjoyed it and share it around. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people out there. And more importantly, put a few comments down below on anything that you can see that I can improve on because this is just a prototype. There are many improvements I think that can be made to this, but I just try to keep it as simple as I possibly can. But anyway, I've got to get going. I've got a lot more packing to do before we head away. I've, I've even got to fit a four bike carrier to the front of our journey, and that will be a video coming up shortly. So I better get cracking with that one. So thanks for watching, and as I always say, get out there, stay safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time. <music>